with Song Talk Radio. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me, my co-host, Phil Emery. How are you doing, Phil? I am um, I'm lighter today. You're lighter? Yeah, I'm about uh, probably, I don't know, maybe 100 grams lighter, because I, I had a tooth taken out the other day, so... Ouch. It was kind of a new experience for me, but uh, but I'm feeling lighter, so I feel more you know energetic, um, more into doing exercise. Good. Yeah. Um, it's good. Next week, next week on inventive ways to lose weight. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> hey, you got to start somewhere. I, start. I always remember that uh, that Simpsons commercial where it was like uh, it was like a, a like a yeah it was like a, basically a commercial with Troy McClure. It was like. Uh, Smoke yourself, um, smoke yourself thin. <laughs> smoke yourself thin. <laughs> well, that would probably work. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. And uh, in the meantime, please send your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or feedback at songtalk.ca, and we'll share your thoughts on the show. And please visit songtalk.ca to see the show post for this episode, to find links to resources we mentioned, and to download lyric and chord sheets to follow along with the songs we feature. And uh, before we get to tonight's guest, uh, we just want to make the big announcement once again uh, that our songwriting challenge for 2023 has officially dropped. Yay! Mm, yay. Yay for us. And um, there is a uh, dedicated web page now on songtalk.ca. You'll notice on the sidebar or if you're on your phone, probably on the bottom bar, <laughs> if you scroll all the way to the bottom, um, uh, called the Song Songwriting Challenge 2023. And of course, uh, the challenge this year is to write a song in a mode, in a mode that an unusual nice. mode or a mode that you're not uh, familiar with. Um, so in other words, not major or minor. Folks? Yes. Okay. Okay, kids. <laughs> they are technically modes, but that's not what we're trying to do. That's what we're trying to do here. Unless you've never written a song in major, which I've got a doubting, but <laughs> <laughs> if you if you do send us a song in major and tell us you've never written a song in major, then we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I that? think this will be a bit of a stretch for a lot of people because mm -hmm. modes are very are very odd. They and are. if you're not used to them, it might it might take you a bit of time to do some YouTubing and researching, like, you know, choose choose a mode, maybe even at random. Maybe we should develop a random mode uh, generator. You just log in and it'll just give you one of the modes. You just need a, you just need a five sided die. That's true. And um, do some research because uh, it can take a little while to get your brain around it. Yeah. But I think it'll it'll prove really beneficial for your for your songwriting palette. Mm -hmm. And, um, and and like uh, we were saying on the show last week uh, that, we, that we just published with uh, Jeff Allen Greenway, um, and one of the things he was saying, too, is that, you know, there, there are modes that are like closer to major, you know, Lydian and Mixolydian, especially. Um, they're, very close, they're very close to major. So that's a good place to start experimenting. And, and of course, on, on that on that web page that we just mentioned, um, we do link to two Spotify playlists that were provided to us um, by our, uh, our colleagues at Berkeley. School of Music, um, one one uh, songs that are all in Dorian. I think the other one is the other one is Mixolydian. Um, it's just a playlist of songs, and they're all popular songs. You guys know these songs, and you never yeah, know that they're nice. in the mode, right? So that's a good place to sort of, you know, if you listen to those and go like, hey, if it if it's if it sounds that easygoing and not weird, then yeah, I can I can pull this off, and yeah. it'll be it'll kind of be okay, right? So and and there's a lot more um, resources um, on 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 that uh, web page. One of one of my favorite videos um, from David Bennett on on YouTube, where he where he explains it. Where for me, it just went oh, and and I felt like I finally got it. Um, nice. So it's a lot. There's lots of things to explore, and um, yeah, and 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 you know the, the other thing too is that it's. It's March now. Phil and I are going to be doing our episodes, um, our answers to the challenge in June, and our listener episodes will probably air. We'll probably do in like July, August, yes. through throughout the summer, and maybe even into the fall. So you guys have time. Yeah, don't procrastinate, but you do have time to <laughs> sort of, true. you know, you know, do every every once in every, every now every week or so, maybe do a little investigation and a little playing around yeah. <laughs> with some modes and see, see what you come up with, which would be a good uh, warm-up exercise. <laughs> to uh, One thing would there. be interesting is with the entries, if the people will tell us if they're primarily a you know piano player or a guitar player, mm -hmm. um, because the two instruments are very different. And 
Yeah. I think the two instruments tend to think about music in a slightly different way. So it certainly took me a little while to get used to get used to the concept of modes. And I think just recently I just get kind of switched in my brain to understand it. So mm-hmm. it'll take some time. It'll be worth it though. Yeah. I, I think I, I get the feeling it, it is a little bit easier to, to get your head around it on piano than it is on guitar. Yeah, I think it is actually. But um, so write it, write your song on piano, Phil. <laughs> That's true. I could, I suppose. <laughs> I have written some, pia- some songs on piano. Yeah. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. And, um, uh, one one of our good friends of the of the podcast and uh, and uh, an awesome uh, uh, music brain person as well, uh, Chad Shank, who's who's been on our podcast a couple times. Um, he actually is going to be on the next roster of the lyric writing course at Berkeley Online, and That's he's going to so be teaching. Awesome. He's going to be teaching alongside the one and only Pat Patterson. So, congratulations wow. to Chad, and uh, he's a great instructor. He's got a fantastic YouTube channel, and he does uh, online workshops at his at home songwriting meetup group and everything. Um, and he's got a lot of great content. So I'm sure he'll make a fantastic instructor at, at Berkeley. I know he's done the Berkeley courses, and he was even saying on his on his posts, it's kind of kind of full circle for him because this is the course he did <laughs> years ago, oh, nice. and, and now he's actually teaching it. And um, and and one other thing, uh, not, not, not to give our listeners too many challenges to do, but um, in in Chad's meetup group, he actually posed a challenge uh, just uh, last week, and and th- this one's fairly quick. It's it's due at the end of March, so by the time this podcast drops and you guys hear about it, um, check our check our social media channels, our, our Twitter and Facebook especially, and we'll we'll put a link to the. Um, to the meetup group uh, where you can find out more about his his challenge um very very different than ours he has a list of th- seven yes. different requirements you have to meet for this challenge so it's a little bit i don't know if that's more complicated one of them isn't writing in a mode so at least there's yeah. that <laughs> but uh our challenges tend to be for a very specific thing to learn yeah. so instead of just saying oh you, you know this is a way of writing a new song this is a way of writing a song and learning about modes. And that's yeah. really what this point is. So yeah. you may not wind up with the best song in the world, but that is okay. Mm-hmm. Because it's all about learning about modes and how to use them so that when you are working on other pieces, they become part of your palette. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think that's, that, that's the big benefit here. So anyway, we'll, we will share about uh, Chad's um, uh, songwriting challenge. I, I think I'm going to pursue it. At least I'll try <laughs> to do something in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll see where we end up with, with that. So we'll check our socials for that. And, um, and I think that's about it. So uh, tonight, um, we're happy to welcome uh, Toronto-based rock band Fake Magic. And here's a taste of their song, Sit Down. Markham and Brian Pacanella grew up in the burbs of Richmond Hill, playing a lot of basement rock. In 2005, they moved to Toronto to attend Humber College. Greg for jazz, Brian for comedy. Greg went on to play with Who's Army, The Moors, now Jackie and Keegan Powell. Brian spent years as a writer and comedian, uh, gaining some viral fame and a CCA nom for the Toronto-centric parody of the Pet Shop Boys' West End Girls with his troupe Plum Thunder. In 2018, they reconnected for their first EP, Hi-Fi, followed by album N.A. in 2020. With their second album, Sad Dad, they aim to expand, adding guitarist pal and former Who's Army bandmate Corey William. Pursuing interests over trends, they avoid labels. Call it dork rock, indie rock, alt rock, call it Steven, call it a cab. It's rock, and it's a good time. And tonight, uh, we have uh, Brian Pacanella with us. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, Brian. Hey, happy to be here, Neil. Thanks. Thanks for coming on the show. And can you just uh, tell our listeners uh, what your role is in the band and who are the other band members? Sure. So um, 
there's two main members, me and Greg. Um, you know, we we pulled in Corey for the recent album, but we we very much trade off a bit of everything. So I'm I'm the person who leads vocals most of the time. Um, I play a little bit of keys, play a little bit of guitar, um, play a little MPC recently. Um, but that's sort of the areas I cover. Um, also drum loops from time to time. Greg also has the same thing. He's throwing drums together. He's mainly the bass player, guitar. Um, so we both throw a lot into the mix. Uh, we try not, we own the categories of vocals being me and bass being Greg. Everything else is kind of however we want to cover the field. And the songwriting is both you and Greg, but kind of equal 50 50 or? Yeah, yeah, it's 50 50. And I think with the latest album, we pulled in Corey because he's an amazing guitarist. And I think he really uh, elevated our latest stuff to a level that we couldn't really achieve ourselves. So he's, he's a good buddy already. So it made, made complete sense. And I think we were all really happy with, with him uh, joining us for that. Yeah, it's always interesting to me writing writing in bands. Like I'm, I'm in a band. I know Phil's been in, in, in bands. And it's kind of cool how... I find it's it's pretty neat. You can bring like the idea of just for I'm just like I've got a chorus. Here's an idea. Here's my chorus. See what you guys think, and then they bounce it around and 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 we write it all together. So you don't have to you don't have to do everything. <laughs> <Right? Like, laughs> totally. Yeah. Like how, 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 how does the collaboration work in your band? Um, well, it's it's totally exactly as you said. I think um, you know, like I'll I'll bring in a kernel of a thing, whether it's a chorus or I, I try and do something beginning to end even if a lot of it is ugly i'll try and map out sort of a full idea as far as i can take it knowing that you know there's going to be gaps in it that i'm sure greg is gonna fill in 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 certain ways and you know i think we both elevate our stuff really well i think he has a very different brain than i do when it comes to music so we really complement each other well in terms of like greg is a very bass rhythm based brain and my brain is a lot more melodic vocal um thinking generally so i i i I often make things knowing that there's going to be a hole right in the middle of it and i'm hoping greg fills in that hole when i bring it to a practice and i think we both do that in our own way very cool seems to work out uh, quite well (laughs) so you're generally working from music first uh then yeah, yeah. It, it starts with, um, you know, a hook or a riff or a drum loop that really sounds good. Um, I don't think it's ever the same twice. I don't know if you guys find that. <laughs> I don't, you know, you try to map out your method and then you find a really cool thing that completely th- flies in the face of everything you've been doing up until then and you have to readjust. <clears throat> um, but it always starts with the kernel of something good that you feel like you can really run a mile with, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You start with the music. You start with the music, and then you uh, do your lyrics on top of that. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, so I have a background as a comedian, and I mm. started started down that path doing a lot of uh, improvisation. So what I try to do is, I, I might have an idea for where the song is going, and and I, I call them laying down my my dudes and beats. Uh, so essentially, I'll <laughs> well, we'll do a pass where I'll just do a lot of. I, I might come up to some some lyrical ideas as as we're doing a few runs of the song over, and and I find that's an interesting building block because it's completely subconscious, like it's it's left to whatever pops out of my head as as we're sort of playing along to it, and I find it, it becomes an interesting challenge after the fact to you know reincorporate some of that stuff that came out spontaneously and organic and in the moment into something that later can be spun into more of a a complete narrative. Hmm. So does it tend to be uh, more sort of story songs as opposed to, uh, you know, sort of, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that? I think it can come from anywhere on a, on a daily basis. I think it's, it's a different thing. It could be a person you see on the subway. It could be the way you're feeling that day. It could be um, just some words that sound nice together that end up you, you run with until it makes sense down the line. Um, but it can really come from anywhere. Yeah. Do you guys find the same thing that things come from anywhere when you, when you're looking for ideas or. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, for myself, I think I used to write more abstract lyrics because I was more hiding behind things <laughs> before. <laughs> and, and now I'm just trying to be more, more direct um, with, with, with a more storytelling aspect and more emotional thing. 
I know Phil for Phil lyrics is always the last thing, right, Phil? Absolutely, yeah. I'm, I I write <laughs> like a lot of people do. I do um, the music and I have the melody, and I do the same thing. I just do nonsense lyrics because I want to be able to get the the rhythm and figure out where the vowels are and where the consonants are. Excuse me, the consonants are, and where the um, you know what the rhythms are like. And then once I get that, then I try to jam, you know, words into it. And uh, yeah, often the whole production is done and the lyrics are the last thing I work on. Yeah, okay. Same same process. Like I've tried different ways and I find that if I tried the opposite way, it just ends up trying to cram a mm. square into a round hole and nothing really works out the way you want it to and it feels forced. So I try to let things come organically where, where they can. Yeah, I think, I think it's important to discover as a songwriter, what, what works for you. And, and like you say, if, if you got, if you got Greg to sort of bounce things off of, and you know where the gaps lie and you guys work well together because you've done it a long time, you know, what you can, you know, what you can sort of not address very well and, and he'll take care of it kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, just just pass it over the fence. I'll, 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 let him, I'll let him take care of the rest. Um, what yeah. I wanted to ask you, Brian, is this idea, I mean, the, the, your album is called Sad Dad. And I don't know if you guys recently became parents or what, what the case is, but, the, but there seems to be, even, even in the song we're, we're talking about tonight, Sit Down, there seems to be something that I like to refer to as like suburban rock, right? Where traditionally rock, you think, you think, you know, you know, deep and dirty in the city or whatever. And I always, I always think of the band Rush um, mm-hmm. because and there was actually a book that I read most of. I never finished it. It was called Middletown Dreams or something like that. And the author was basically talking about Rush and how they were a suburban band and they talked about suburban things. And I don't know, is, is that something that you guys are conscious of being from Richmond Hill? I mean, I know you're in Toronto now, but being suburban kids, is that yeah. something that injects into your music? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like I've, I've known Greg, we, I've known him since grade two and we lived down the street from each other in Richmond Hill um, we've been in garage bands in the suburbs for most of our lives in various forms. Um, so I think it definitely influences what we do. Like uh, um, even for, for our latest video, we actually drove out to Richmond Hill to my aunt's garage to film it, to just really get back to that kind of suburban dad vibe. Uh, which is funny because Cor- Corey's the only actual proper dad in our group. Like we're me and me and Greg are dad age, so it's it's an acknowledgement of that. Like being too old to be cool and young. Yeah, um, <laughs> we have yet to experience actual dad dub yet. <laughs> right on, right on. Okay, nice. Now, one yeah. thing I wanted to ask is, how do you deal with disagreements? Because I think that's something about. Uh, being in a band that you there will be disagreements between, you know, approaches to songs or, you know, uh, how do you deal with that? Do you have a structure in place or do you just yell at each other? Or? <laughs> well, we, we, we meet at midnight in the park and we have ourselves a knife fight. And <laughs> <laughs> not, no, <just> <laughs> um, no I, I think for the most part, we're both pretty easygoing guys. And I think there's a, there's a lot of mutual respect between us in terms of um, knowing if someone's really not feeling a thing, they're probably not all the way wrong. So it's, it's about finding a middle ground and, and about respecting the fact that if something is not working for one of us, it's likely not going to work for us as a whole anyway. Um, so often the ideas that, that do the best are ones that we can unite on. Um, so I think any, any disagreements probably end up on the wayside. It's just like, ah, eh, not our thing. Uh, which makes it easier, you know. I, don't, I, I think both of us are kind of conflict averse. We're like the opposite of, of like a 70s dramatic rock band where you're throwing guitars around the room and stuff. Like <laughs> at most it's a it's a soft disagreement. Yeah, I think I think I think that's a that, that's a that's a good approach and that's an interesting insight is if it doesn't work for one person like really, really badly, then it's it's probably not gonna work in in in, in the in the entire band because yeah you 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 can get in that situation where one of the band members is really adamant that that they're right and and objectively yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> totally right so that, totally. that's a really good thing but um yeah i, I always find that, that, that that's an interesting thing and it's like well no that's not going to work but then 
but then you're then, then as a band you're kind of stuck well what's the alternative then <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you're, you're either going to drag somebody along for the ride and they're yeah. going to hate it and you know yeah, exactly. it's going to suffer either way <laughs> do you have a formal agreement between you um about writing the songs and any kind of you know business or financial issues something that people <laughs> never seem to worry think about when they get into these Get into bands, but and then if you ever start making money, that's when everything gets really complicated. Until you end up in court. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, we have the luxury of we make zero dollars of off of everything we do, so yeah. zero <laughs> divided by two is still zero. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I I see it as a luxury if we ever get a point where we are fighting over those kind of details because it means we've made it in some form, which would be lovely. Uh, but I, I can't see us getting in a fighting situation even in that case i think we look at everything as 50 50 you know it we succeed or fail together on it good way of looking at it yeah yeah i always reference uh sloan one of my, one of my favorite bands and uh there's four members of sloan and they all write songs and they all sing lead vocals um andrew scott the drummer probably writes the fewest songs i, I would i would dare to say he's only he just writes the strangest songs not the pop hits but, you know, regardless of what whoever does, and it's pretty clear who wrote which song. Once you get to know the band, you know, oh, that's a Jay song. That's a Chris song. That's, that's definitely <laughs> Patrick song because it's got the fuzz guitar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but but, but as, as far as I understand it, they've split everything equally quarter each, no matter what. Yeah. I, I think it's a great way to do it because then I, it's just such a, a calorie burner that has nothing to do with the thing you're enjoying, right? Like if you're going to sit there with it, you know, with a tally saying like, oh, you added this, I added that. Like, that, there's nothing fun about yeah, that. Yeah, 30% cut for that, <laughs> lyric and whatever. And it also makes everyone more part of the same team, I think. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah. You should look at it as a team, I think. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because yeah. even, even if you didn't contribute directly to the song you may contribute to the arrangement, the really, the, you know, the wicked cool guitar hook. the Or the energy. Or the yeah. energy of it. I mean, who knows? And th th that could be the thing that makes it a hit. You know, you never know. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. Like I, I made a point to like, you know, Corey being in our new album, I really wanted him to be like on the album cover on a lot of like the material we were putting out for it, just because like, I, I feel like he elevated it. And, and, you know, we spent a lot of time with the tracks before we handed it over to him. But to think that he wasn't also a critical part of it seems so silly to me, like to, you know, to, to parse it apart into like, oh, I'm the I'm the one who really owns this song. Right, like, no right. one owns this song. Okay, um, can we talk a little bit about "Sit Down"? Where, where did this um, song come from? And, and, and it, it seems it seems like it seems like "Sad Dad" might be a bit of a conceptual album. Is this does this fit into a larger picture? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think. We, we always seem to make concept albums. I, there's something I really enjoy about an album being like a full thought beginning to end. Um, I don't think we set out for that to be the case, but you, we tend to do the, the Tom Petty thing of like, we'll, we'll create 50 songs in the hopes that 12 of them become something that reduced down to um, something that, that has a cohesive narrative to it. So I think there are a lot of, of songs in, in the... In, in the Saturn's rings around the album, but what ended up there all had a very succinct theme, at least in our, in our eyes of, um, you know, dads being a dad coming to terms. Like, I, I think it's, it's partially ourselves just coming to terms with like, Oh, we're not young and cool anymore. We're old dudes with day jobs. <laughs> we just love music enough to keep doing it, you know? Um, but it's also, you know, dads we've known, dads we've seen, dads we've seen on TV. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to hit an archetype there beyond, you know, any one thing. Um, so, so the album expresses a lot of different forms of dad. Each, each one is kind of its own chapter in some kind of dad. <laughs> um, and so I think Sit Down is right at the end of the album and it's a bit of, you know, if Sad Dad was one guy, he, he gets to the end of the journey and the clouds sort of part for him. Like it's it's a moment of clarity after a lot of struggle and, and fighting for stuff and, and with breathers in between. Uh, but it's it's sort of sad, sad dad's redemption. Okay. <laughs> you know. And th this is the last track on the album, though, right? Yeah, that's right. It's kind of you're also a proponent of playing the album in order, aren't you? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I wanted, yeah, to, yeah. I wanted to ask about that because people tend to not listen to full albums much anymore. I mean, do, now are, are you going to put this out as a CD? So I'm so surprised people put out CDs, but but lots of people sell them. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting idea. We've talked about vinyl before. Um, I think our our sales would need to be high enough to sort of justify doing a run, but it, it's a really cool idea. Um, yeah, it is. It is a bit counterintuitive in terms of it's not the way everyone digests music, um, but I, I, I it's probably something inherent that goes far beyond. Um, you know what's what's marketable which is probably a, a curse and a blessing in a way mm-hmm. uh but you know I, I i have a background of writing as well so like i i write screenplays and other things and i, I just like the idea of a, a narrative having a beginning middle ending so when i when i look at music i want it to have that same sort of um structure to it and you know i i don't care if people don't listen to it in that order it's, it's there if they need it and if they don't need it it you know don't don't worry about it. It's yeah, just, it's just that's something you're looking it's just, for. It's just yet another level, you know, when they hear two or three songs and then they hear the whole album and, and discover that there is a narrative thread that holds them together. See, it's more rewarding for the listener to be like, oh, I didn't I didn't know that these songs actually fit together in this way. That's kind of cool. And you discover something new about the band, which, which yeah. is kind of a kind of a fun thing. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm fully a proponent. Of, I did a blog. I did a, a post on my on my blog about like in, in support of the the full album and, and, and the and the albums that justify themselves by being full albums. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I love like Dark Side of the Moon. Or, you know, there's so many you can name where it's like, I just like the idea of you're gonna buy it in vinyl, and if you're gonna buy it in vinyl, you're gonna put that down and you're gonna listen to the whole thing front to back. You it's know, got, like, it's got a something. first half and a second half. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really Sometimes appreciate that. As Sometimes a, if you as play the B side first, no. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I think even with our song, we yeah, what, so, so it, wasn't it actually like that? You guys wrote a bunch of songs and then whittled it down to twelve songs or whatever it is, and then and then decided upon the dad's theme. Or it sounds like it. You decided upon the dad's theme before you wrote at least some of them. Amazingly, not really. Like really? It, it was a very organic process. Like we we do, we have a back catalog of a bunch of stuff that will percolate down. Like we're we're working on a new album right now that has a completely different concept, um, and some of it is based on the time. I feel like certain, like we we try to get together once every couple of weeks and just bang out one song. You know, if we come up with one song that we're kind of feeling like this has legs and it's sixty percent to the way of something, that's that's a success story. So I think when you look back and you have, you know, 52 of those songs over a year, you, you start to see themes emerge that you can you can file into certain categories. Um, so that's that's kind of the way we do it. And then the cream kind of rises to the top that way, which is which is good. Uh, but it, it wasn't it's very organic. Like, it's not like we set out to be like, these are the dad songs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, all right. They just thematically kind of align. They just, they just haven't worked that way. Are you guys strictly yeah. a recording band or do you perform live as well? Um, right now we're strictly recording. Uh, we haven't played live very much. We'd love to, and I think that's something we'd like to do in the was future. A pandemic thing, or was that the way you always wanted it? I'd, I'd love to call it a pandemic thing. That would be a great excuse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think um, pandemic didn't help by any means. I think we did have a plan to play live at some point, and then that kind of crushed it. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I mean, it's um, we have so many we add a lot of layers to stuff or getting extra guitars on it or finding a drummer to play it live. There's a lot of elements that come together to, to do a live show that we just don't always have, have time or or effort for. So I feel like just being a basement project is great because we can, we can really put a lot of time into it on our own time and, and release it exactly the way we want to. Um, And, and the idea is, you know, if anything really takes off, absolutely. If, If we have, time and effort to put together a live show we'd love to you know we 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 both have a background doing that kind of thing um you know greg's been in various bands playing live um so we don't shy away from it it's just uh a case of being being lean and <laughs> and and light that that keeps us doing it this way for now right. okay um so why don't we take a, a listen to sit down and then um a full listen and then we'll uh, talk about it some more sure great
very cool. Very nice. Very cool. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks, guys. What do you think about that, uh, Phil? Yeah, quite quite enjoyed it. It's um, it brought to mind um, the drive by truckers. Uh, I'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with that, but it's the song structure is interesting in that there's not like a verse chorus kind of thing, and it's. Uh, kind of like a stream of consciousness you know it's there's not a there's not a constant refrain from every at the end of every um verse or every uh couplet or anything and as that nice sort of jammy thing it's very much of um a last song of the album song which is kind of the which and it's this would not be something i would do because i think i tend to automatically thinking of verse chorus kind of structure but this is kind of like almost almost a nice jam which uh, interesting it's something i don't do i'm thinking oh maybe i should try doing that but uh yeah i thought it was quite uh quite interesting i liked it a lot i like the mm-hmm. hand claps too <laughs> <laughs> the organ and the guitar solos yeah. you don't hear guitar solos too much anymore. that is true are those real hand claps or are those um <laughs> VST instruments. I believe they're real hand claps. Yeah. Nice. yeah why not? Nice. It's easy to record hand claps. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 I really, I really liked it. I think it's interesting that like it's it's a four chord song. It's it's a loop. The music is a loop, and it's like a one the one five six four kind of thing, right? It just it just keeps on going, and you know, and and then and then everything's a verse. Pretty much and until you could you could argue that the end is a chorus, but it's on the same loop. And, and you know, so then then it's like, well, how do you how do you make it not boring? How do you make it interesting? Right. So the melodies are are different all the time. There's different mm. there's space where you wouldn't expect there to be space, um, different rhymes, different, you know, different turns of phrase. I love that you, you used it twice in the song, the word oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Who uses oopsie in a song? That's great. Um, I think there might be a burp in there at one point as well. We, we try and <laughs> yeah. subvert things to to a degree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's really great that way. There's a, the lovely, there's some, there's, a, there's some good terms of phrases and 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 some funny stuff. I guess I've been farting in the breeze. <laughs> Which ways of blowing, right? Um, and Spider Man reference, and it just it just keeps on, it just keeps chugging along, and, and like and like Phil's saying, it's kind of a jam song. Like you can just kind of keep perpetuating this and keep it rolling, you know. But but it does have an end because having a real hard time, but I'll be just fine, mm. right? And, yeah. and you, you know that there's a resolution at the end, even though musically it doesn't tell you that, but lyrically it's certainly telling you that, and the rep- and that's the only time you actually repeat a structure so that seems very deliberate <laughs> <laughs> yeah sad dad's coming out the other end you know right <laughs> right <laughs> uh there's also no rhymes yeah in the song which is which is interesting there are a couple please and breeze can and again but i think it gets less rhymy as you go along yeah we weren't too strict about about making it rhyme it was more you know if it didn't stick out as wrong then then keep it because it's right you know (laughs) there's always a challenge with these mid tempo songs and that is the challenge is finding the right tempo because you know five beats per minute either way drastically changes the feel of the song and sometimes if you hear these mid-tempo songs played live and the band plays them too live or play, plays them too fast live they just kind of lose that sort of groove it's a it's did you have to sort of play around with the tempo or did it just was this what it came up as or because it's something i've been playing around with like trying to find something that's not too slow not too fast finding that sweet spot can be kind of tough and this thing's got a swing soft shuffle feel as well it's not a straight four four yeah, no, I, I think um, we're we're very guilty of playing things too slow and way after the fact, having to turn up the BPM to mm. make it make it a little more poppy and a little more quick. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah. I think this might have been one that would just stuck where it was weirdly, which is weird for us. Most of the time we have to crank it up a bit. Um, but yeah, I think this this came out of just me bringing in a, a just a simple chord progression key thing. And and it just, it never got boring as long as we kept doing different things over it. So like, okay, yeah. all right, yeah. you know, <laughs> we, we're not tired or bored yet. This is, we might be onto something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 it's really great that way. And, and, very, and, and very unconventional in, in a sense, because you think, you know, garage rock band, you guys are, you know, kind of a classic thing. You're going to do first chorus. I mean, you could, you very, very easily could have thrown a bridge into this thing with a different chord pattern, but you didn't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, it's, it's, it, 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 is, it is subversive in that way. You know, and it's not, um, how, how long, how long is this song? How, what is it? Was it taking? I think it's a little under four minutes. Little, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Three minutes, 45 seconds. Three minutes, 45. Yeah. With the guitar solos and everything. So it's not, it's not a super short song. It's not a super long mm-hmm. song. It's, it's in the middle there somewhere. You know, it's certainly long for a contemporary pop song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think it's the longest one on the album. Is it really? Oh, well. Yeah. Did you consider... Adding bits to it, like um, chorus or a bridge or a break or anything like that. Um, I think, like like most songs, like we'll kick it around. We'll try different things to it. Like there's a lot of tests we conduct of of does this sound better if we add a bit of this, a bit of that. I think with this case, we we just couldn't find much that it needed. You know, it's it's that whole thing. You don't you don't want to put lipstick on something that doesn't need it. Like mm. it, it, I think it, it came down to feeling right the way it was so don't don't overthink it you know just walk away from the thing because it feels right in the moment and the more you you analyze it you might just ruin it if you if you muck it around too what much. about the lyric was that pretty much written one draft and that was it or did you have a little, little bit of back and forth do you have verses that you rejected <laughs> yeah you know when it comes to lyrics i'm, I'm a lot more um uh tinkery that way like i think it, it probably started with deets and dudes the way way you were saying earlier phil of, of just the right sounds and i think um this one i sort of found an interesting through line with uh glenn campbell's um you'd better you better sit down or you better sit down kids and i think it was off it was off an album the same album that had wichita lineman i believe and it it was i found an interesting through line in that it was the same narrative that same that, that felt like it was building towards in terms of it's a father telling telling their kids that we're going to go through a divorce, it's going to be terrible, but in the end, it's going to be okay. Um, and so I really, at some point in the process of just Googling and rhyme zoning, I, I found that and I found the narrative to it and I thought, oh, this is so fun because, you know, it, it plays into sad dad in terms of you know being being a nod to the rock that came before us while if we could subvert it a bit you know if you could make it a modern dad that's dealing with spider-man and you know he's not being graceful about his divorce he's saying that you know he's farting in the breeze he's clearly not (laughs) not handling the best way he can uh but there's you know there's a comparable there in terms of turning something classic and beautiful into something modern and and real and and with some rough edges to it Ooh. i wonder where uh where will i do what will i go yeah <laughs> yeah <I> was like <laughs> <laughs> that that was actually one of greg's i think i i wrote it the the regular way of, of how that would normally be phrased grammatically right. and he was like what if you switch them and then we tried it and it just it was kind of funny and it worked, so we kept it. Yeah, it, 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 but I'm it, glad you picked up on that. Yeah, I think about that as well. Is like, is that was that the way it was supposed to be? Like, what's going on here? It, 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 has, it has that it has that kind of subversion to it as well because it's like confused and and it really gets across that that notion of confused and directionless and what's what's the next thing going to be like. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a bit of buffoonery sprinkled in there, just mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> what will I do? What will I go? You can't even say it. <laughs> it was hard to bizarre. say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your brain wants to fix it. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Exactly. <laughs> You'd have to practice that over and over again until it, until it sounds right. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, what's uh, what's next for you guys? Um, so, probably the next thing we're, we're going to be chewing on for a while is a new album that, that will come out at some point, hopefully this year, um, and it'll again be sort of a concept piece. Um, probably something business related. We're not sure. We haven't nailed it down completely yet, but it will have sort of a maybe a more corporate feel to it. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> and like the lyrics about corporate life or? Um, uh, sonically, lyrically, mm, okay. all the above. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we might we might pull in different people too. I think we have sort of a Steely Dan model going where it's like it's two main guys and then everyone around it is just like who we like, who we're interested in, who we can have fun pulling into a, a session for a thing, be it, you know, a drummer or a guitarist. Hmm. That's a great way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a fantastic, uh, that's a great method. You guys have a thing, you guys have that thing going on, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. And uh, I hear the band, so that is all the time we have on Song Talk Radio. Special thanks to uh, Brian from Fake Magic, and, and where can our listeners hear more of Fake Magic? Uh, we're on Spotify, we're on Instagram, uh, you can check out our, our latest video on YouTube as well. We're, we're all over the place. Okie dokie, sounds great. And uh, we want to hear from you, our listeners. So please send your comments on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram to at Song Talk Radio or send us an email feedback at songtalk.ca. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. And don't forget to uh, check out our website for all the products, books, and web services we mention on our resources uh, webpage. And please join us at our next monthly Song Talk meetup. Whether you're in Toronto for our in-person meetups or anywhere in the world for our online meetups, it's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend. Bring a song and a lyric sheet and get constructive feedback from other songwriters. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. Uh, you can follow me at neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil. philemory.ca. And uh, Brian, what's uh, Fake Mag- Fakes Magic's favorite social media platform? Where are you guys the most? Ooh, you know what? Uh, YouTube. Check out our YouTube video. YouTube you put some time awesome. into it. It's got a good suburban backdrop. <laughs> so check us out there. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Be sure to stop by the website, songtalk.ca, to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Thanks for tuning in and keep, keep on, on writing. writing. <laughs> We're getting better at that. It's all hard. We'll get there sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thanks, guys. That was, that was fun. That was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, I really like the lyrics. They're actually very heartfelt. Which is so <laughs> oh, nice. Great. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we try and do that both, you know, it's always the dichotomy of like, I like it a little bit silly, but with a very like real core and heart to it. And you kind of map, put them all in a blender. And, yeah, no, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's hard a, to it's be clever, hard. but it's hard to be clever and heartful, heartful at the same time. Some of this yeah. is just hard to be clever, so. It seems to me to be clever, it's impossible for me to be heartfelt. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're trying to be clever, you're never you're never going to be clever. Even, even when I try to do heartfelt, it always ends up being clever. Once I was writing a song that I wanted to be really heartfelt, and I showed it to a, 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 a songwriter friend of mine who, who writes clever songs, mostly, right? And he yeah. was like, you know what? You've already started this thing clever. Like, it just just go with it. Just embrace it yeah. and be clever. Like, <laughs> Came out naturally that way. Don't, yeah, exactly. don't mess with it. Yeah. <laughs> try to force the heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, a fun, a fun fact that I didn't get to mention, but oh, because yeah. you mentioned the suburbs, suburbs in rush connection. Oh. So my mom used to live in the middle of Richmond Hill and down the street was where rush would practice. Oh. And so they'd be blasting and the neighborhood would mostly be like, what are they doing over there? What's that loud music? And little, <laughs> little did they know within, you know, five years or something, they'd be one of the biggest bands oh, in the world. Goodness. But in this little pocket of Richmond Hill, they're like, "What, what are they doing over there?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think um, uh, I think it was they. Uh, they were one of them went to the same junior high as I did. Yeah. Oh no way! Yeah. Yeah. Um, R- yeah. R- R- G- Lang, I think it was. Yeah, it was one of them. I think for a while or something. <laughs> it was that was okay. that was their big uh, claim claim to fame, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the most famous person from our school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where was, was Yeah, because Phil grew up in Willowdale. I, I lived in Willowdale okay. until just a few years ago. I remember when they opened up the, the Lee Lifeson Art Park. Oh, nice. <laughs> Down on thing. And um, and one of our one, one of our one of our favorite guests, there's, there's a fellow from Hamilton, Jacob Moon, fantastic singer, songwriter, guitarist, loop pedal guy. And nice. his his claim to fame and how I found him was he did a he did a, a cover version of Subdivisions um, on the rooftop on a rooftop in Hamilton 
fantastic because he had like he had the loop pedal thing going guitar thing and but the, the, the good thing about him like most people do rush songs and they're terrible because they tried to do them like rush did them he owned it and did yeah. his own cover version of it and it was fantastic and and oh, he, wow. he got to perform that song when rush was inducted into the was it rock and roll hall of fame i think yeah um for for them and and wow. and when they opened Al, they opened the lee life's in art park uh jacob moon did a, a show there and uh and getty and alex were there no at, way at, at, at so I, was like, I didn't i didn't talk to them obviously but it, they were they were sitting like 20 feet away <laughs> <laughs> so cool. it was pretty cool wow talk about pressure to play it in front of the, the people who made I know. Oh, he, he's blogged wow. about he's, he's talking about our videos and stuff he's like well, it was just so like <laughs> <laughs> hope but, they but, like but, it well, but the, the the really super cool thing was that he he had a little tape recorder, like a little portable tape recorder thing, and in the middle of the song, he would just he would play back his voice recording subdivision, right? And then when <laughs> when they were at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, he asked Neil Peart, he said, "Can you just? I have my little recorder here. Can you say subdivisions into this thing?" So he got Neil's voice on oh, on his and he's been using that ever since. He every time he performs <laughs> that song, yeah, it really makes sweet. it even more authentic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Very really <laughs> cool. Anyway. All righty. Exercise now. <laughs> Can't get that sound again. No. <laughs> no. Well, it's, you better you, well, you digitize it and archives it properly. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, please <laughs> do. a long tape recorder that's going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Make um, copies. Yeah, we will uh, send you an email when this when the show's up, usually like by Sunday or Monday or something. Yeah. Okay. And, a few days. Um, and then if you could share it amongst your uh Oops. your folks, that would be awesome. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Great. Okay, great having you on the show, Brian. And uh Thanks so say, much. Hi to the, say hi to the gang. <laughs> yeah. We'll go give hell to Greg for not showing up. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. no, it's a pleasure, guys. Thanks, thanks so much back for having on me. next time for when you release your next EP. Yeah, yeah. I would love to. Anytime. Sure. All right. <laughs> Alrighty. Have a great night. Take care. Hey, you too, guys. Take care. Good night.